we are so fortunate, again, to have incredible, talented, knowledgeable people. And Dr. Maletti, who lives in Rancho Mirage, travels all over the world and speaks for a lot of money. And he does this for us for free. We are so fortunate. He's been on our commission as our expert for a number of years, long before I came on, on board. Just to tell you a little bit about him, to start with, last two weeks ago, he was at the White House. He was invited by the White House to talk about what to do in case of an, a major event and uh, to be prepared. So definitely, he's considered an expert. He was appointed by Ronald Reagan, President Reagan, to be on the US delegation to the Soviet Union and to give advice about earthquakes going back to the 1980s. He also was involved in the investigation of evacuation for the World Trade Center towers on 9-11. He's been to the White House more than once to talk about security. Governor Schwarzenegger appointed him to the California Seismic Safety Commission to advise our state about earthquake legislation. And he chaired the Board of Visitors for FEMA, is that right? Yeah. Uh, National Training Center for Emergency Managers during the Clinton administration. He chaired the Committee on Hazards and Disasters in the National Academy of Sciences and Engineering. And he's consulted on emergency planning to corporations and national governments at home and abroad. Closer to home, Dr. Maletti has a 20-year member, or is a 20-year member, of the Advisory Council to Southern California Earthquake Center. He oversaw their public education and outreach program and helped them invest, invent two things that might be familiar to you. The brochure, putting down roots in earthquake country, and the annual shakeout exercise, which many of you participate in. And we can thank Dr. Maletti for all of that. Thank you for being here. Please give Dr. Maletti a warm welcome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's absolutely a pleasure to be here with you this evening. It is true I've had an uh, incredible career and have gotten to go <clears throat> so many different places and meet so many different people and do so many different things and make contributions regarding natural hazard reduction. Um, not just earthquakes, but my favorite hazard is earthquakes. I'm here tonight to talk about the big one. How many of you have ever heard about the big one? Well, you're going to hear about it again. I'm going, to, I'm going to define the big one for you. Shaking in the big one will be harder than any earthquake anyone alive in the state of California has ever experienced. The shaking will last, or its duration, longer than any earthquake anyone alive in the state of California has ever experienced. The impact area just won't be one town or local sub part of LA. It'll be all of Southern California. And it's been classified by the leading seismologists in the country as the most likely great earthquake in America. Do I have your attention? Yes. <laughs> the area that's going to be impacted will go from Imperial Valley, River, uh, Imperial County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, Ventura County, uh, a little bit of Orange County, uh, et cetera. In other words, everything we think of when we think of Southern California. The star on the uh, Salton Sea is scientists guess that the epicenter or point of origin for the quake will be in Bombay Beach on the Salton Sea. Emergency response generously can be described as follows. All local first responders will be overwhelmed. So when people think of emergencies, they typically think of calling 911 and somebody comes to help. No one's going to be able to come to help 
because the first responders will be so overwhelmed. Help from the outside to help those first responders uh, by having first responders from other towns and counties come isn't going to happen. It'll be blocked because of all the physical destruction in Southern California. They won't be able to get here. And the response gaps, that which the first responders who are overwhelmed can't fill, will be filled by the public. Now, I can't see you because the lights are out, but I have a request. Does anybody not, is anybody in here not willing to take my request? Well, I couldn't see your hand, so I'm going to ask you to do this anyway. <laughs> Turn your head and look at the person sitting to your left. Okay, now turn and look at the person sitting on your right. Those are the people that are gonna help you when this earthquake happens. <laughs> and but what I wanna point out, and what you really, really need to see and distinguish tonight is they were looking at you. <laughs> the technical basis for what I'm talking about tonight uh, comes from bringing together about a hundred of our nations and states leading earth scientists and engineers who did damage estimates for when this quake happened, social science and uh, experts who uh, put forth estimates about what public behavior is going to be like in this quake based on actual observations of real earthquake victims in prior California earthquakes, and government response experts uh, offered by people who work for the State Office of Emergency Services and the California Seismic Safety Commission. In other words, a team of the leading experts in all relevant subjects was assembled. And they worked for free for one year. And the report that was produced came out in 2008, Lucy Jones, I'm sure some of you have heard of her, was the lead author on it. It's available on the internet. And what I'm gonna share with you tonight was reviewed and endorsed by the US Federal Emergency Management Agency, the US Department of Homeland Security, the Southern California Earthquake Center, the United States Geological Survey, the California Office of Emergency Services, and the State of California uh, Seismic Safety Commission. What this is, is an exercise in gazing into a crystal ball and estimating what it's gonna be like for those of us who live in this valley when this earthquake occurs. There are 17 topics that are discussed in the major report. We're only going over a few tonight. Uh, media coverage, search and rescue, medical services, sheltering, food and water, fire suppression, control and security, route recovery, law enforcement, traffic management, debris removal, essential services, donation management, communication, disaster intelligence, mortality management, and emergency operations centers. Those are the 17 key elements in any emergency plan that any jurisdiction might put together about how to deal with disasters when they occur. Uh, I'm going to, as I speak tonight, occasionally distinguish between what I'm gonna to refer to as the west side. The west side is not us. The west side is basically from the San Andreas Fault to the Pacific Ocean, it's basically Los Angeles. The east side, when I refer to the east side, I'm talking about us, it's basically people from the San Andreas Fault to the east, in other words, the Coachella Valley, so that you could get a sense of this. The San Andreas Fault, if you stood on the roof of this building and you looked north, you could see. It's right at the bottom and behind the first ridge of mountains that you see when you look north. If you ever saw a straight line of palm trees along that mountain range, that's the San Andreas Fault because fault lines stop groundwater from moving and create oases. And in our part of the world, it's a straight line oasis. Uh, it also goes right under the city of Desert Hot Springs. And um, that's where it is, it's pretty close. So media coverage. Okay, I'm gonna take you on a journey now. 
uh, in the first five minutes after the earthquake. Operable media uh, will be switched to ongoing coverage. That's any radio, television, et cetera, station will stop doing what they're doing and only talk about the earthquake. Who knows if anybody's gonna be able to get their transmission. People, victims are gonna turn on their working devices and are gonna discuss the quake with people in close proximity. Half an hour after the earthquake, the media will be mobilized. They'll begin reporting on local incidents throughout Southern California, and scientists, particularly at Caltech, will be uh, put on the air to describe the earthquake. Those of us in the valley are gonna be involved in massive information searching, attempting to find out what happened. And as that happens, will slowly begin to realize the scope of the event. Two hours into it, people are gonna focus in Los Angeles on big urban collapses. There likely will be the collapse of several major engineered high rises in Los Angeles. The national media is gonna be mobilized and larger governments are going to begin attempting to provide uh, assistance. Most information from, that people will receive will come from radio and uh, our focus will shift from ourselves uh, to the community as a whole and something sociologists call the altruistic community begins and this is what people don't get. When major disasters happen, our fear tonight if I did a survey of you would be, I need a shotgun because it's gonna bring out the absolute worst in humanity. And hordes of marauding billionaires housewives from Morningside <laughs> are, are going to invade the springs trying to steal necklaces and diamond rings. The actual research that's gone on suggests that disasters, including the one we'll have, brings out the absolute best in humanity, not the worst. Um, so people, oh, never mind. Uh, vigorous discussion of media reports. We'll be chatting like little banshees. Uh, a day after the event, uh, everybody is gonna focus on Los Angeles. And uh, state information centers are going to open and uh, Sacramento is gonna begin pumping local advice to you. This state knows how to deal with earthquakes. Uh, right, people, however, are gonna be victims of rumors, and uh, there's gonna be a great deal of variation in information quality and accuracy. A lot of what people are gonna be hearing a day after the event in the Valley will likely not be true. Um, three days later, local media will begin to give useful information. National media will report on the number of casualties, the damage that was experienced in Los Angeles, and the governor's pending visit. <laughs> local people are gonna demand information on shelter and recovery. Some rumors will stop. Others, and that's particularly rumors of looting, will become rampant. Uh, a week later, uh, program information will be provided. There'll be aftershock reports. High profile damage will be reviewed over and over again. And dozens, if not more, stories of individual heroic acts will be reported. People, the victims, will have their looting fears peak. The media will fuel rumors and Sacramento will have to exhort and will a great deal of effort to try to stop rumors. It's called rumor control. Now, consequence reduction. What will we wish we had? We'll wish we had a battery and crank operated radios. We'll wish we had more radios. We'll wish, I mean more batteries, we'll wish we had satellite telephones because satellite telephones will work. We'll wish we had solar and car chargers for small devices. 
will also really wish we had ways to talk with loved ones who were separated from us when the earthquake happened. That's if you're at home and your loved one went shopping at Costco and a day or two has gone by and you haven't heard from them. This is gonna be a major issue. And we'll wish, wish we had learned how to tell rumors from facts and what to expect about public shelters. Search and rescue. That's the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. Five minutes after the event, there will be no search and rescue from search and rescue groups. However, victims will begin search and searching for other victims in their immediate vicinity. Half an hour into this, local teams, to the extent that they exist, if they do, uh, will mobilize, and national search and rescue teams will be notified. People will volunteer engaging in search and rescue as individuals. That's you. You will be the volunteer. You'll help with search and rescue. Even though you think, no, not me, you will. And uh, those groups are going to form into groups. And they're going to work as work groups together. And they're going to begin to extract victims that are close to them. And the tools that they're going to use to rescue their neighbors and the people in close proximity to them when this earthquake stops shaking is, is going to be their bare hands and anything else they may have close by. Um, and they'll be digging in rubble incorrectly so that, you know, if you want to dig someone out inside a pile of rubble, you don't dig from the side in because that creates a cavity and the rubble on top of you will cave in on you and then we have multiple people to rescue. You go from the top down. Two hours into the event, local teams will be deployed where they exist. The focus will focus on complex rescues. National teams will mobilize. There'll be insufficient and equipment and people at the national level to help with search and rescue in this event. One day into it, state teams will begin arriving at El Toro. Don't get excited. El Toro is on the other side of the fault. And those state teams really won't have a way to get to this side of the fault. Initially, uh, they'll be dispatched to the LA side of the fault for that very reason. Uh, Regarding us, the victims, 95% of the rescues that are made of victims uh, will be made by other victims. 95% of the people that are rescued in all earthquakes are rescued by other victims. That's true around the world. They're going to need gloves, they're going to need crowbars, uh, and victim work groups are going to begin to develop sophisticated organizational scheme. Somebody will be the leader, somebody will be providing support, someone will be going to find water to bring back and forth to the workers like that. Uh, three days later, the state teams will finally be in the field. Th whoops, three days later. National world teams will be mobilized and some will be arriving in the state. Intense work will continue amongst victims who are engaged in search and rescue activities. Very few of them will have slept for 72 hours, but the number of live people they find will begin to plummet. Typically, if you don't rescue someone within 24 hours after an earthquake, they die. One week later, all the teams will be de deployed uh, the search and rescue teams our nation has, particularly in the state of Virginia, that's where some of the biggest and best are, uh, will be here. And their focus, although it'll be reported on search and rescue, will really be body recovery. People will begin to disband their volunteer search and rescue groups due to fatigue, low success, and a lack of gloves and tools. Consequence reduction. We'll wish we had more seismic integrity for our structures. So if anyone has ever mentioned to you, call an earthquake engineer, have them check out your house, 
see if it can be made stronger and do that? The reason is, is to reduce the number of people in rubble. We'll wish we had heavy duty work gloves, not cheap ones, not thin ones, heavy duty work gloves. We'll wish we had long crowbars. Anybody remember high school physics when they taught you about leverage? A short crowbar doesn't work too well. A really long one does. We'll wish we had heavy duty first aid supplies. And we'll wish we had sunblock hats, canteens, and energy bars to stuff in our pockets when we go out engaging in search and rescue activities. And we'll wish we had learned cert training and how to dig through rubble. And for those of you who are people who live in the city of Rancho Mirage, we provide free cert training to any and everyone who wants it. All you need to do is call City Hall and find out how you get in the next class or the one after it if that one's full. <clears throat> Medical services. This is the Northridge earthquake. Where do you see the earthquake victims? And that was the Northridge earthquake in the middle of Los Angeles. It's called parking lot medicine. Five minutes after the earthquake, there'll be no medical services. People will begin to check for injuries to themselves and to others close by to them. Half an hour later, people, organizations will assess damage and off-duty staff will converge to medical facilities. What do I mean by that? The nurses and doctors who are home because it's not their shift will go to where they work because they'll feel the need to provide the services they provide. There'll be no stopping them. Um, some non-staff residents with medical training uh, who live in our communities will volunteer uh, and pro begin providing uh, medical services on curbsides. Uh, others won't because they'll fear liability. Even though in California, y you can't be sued or be held liable for any Good Samaritan act after a earthquake disaster. Uh, and victims will be delivering most of the first aid that's delivered after this quake. Two hours later, staff will arrive at hospitals and uh, medical centers, outside triage will begin, and medical transport will be difficult to impossible. Volunteers will begin to converge to assist organized medical response, and there'll be uneven convergence on hospitals. What do I mean by that? People who have someone they need to transport to a medical facility will take them to the medical facility they know. They're not going to take them in a way that has injured people be distributed evenly across all medical facilities. Uh, a day later, the state will manage available services. Medical teams will arrive at El Toro. High damaged hospitals will be evacuated. And that's why we're closing airspace, by the way, over the Coachella Valley, because we'll be having helicopters come to take the patients that are in hospitals to other places that are undamaged. So all the medical staff here can focus on earthquake victims. I don't know if that's the plan hospitals have, but that's what's going to happen because that's the plan the state has. Uh, high damaged hospitals will be evacuated and uh, they'll begin the med evacuation of non-quake victims outside the area. A non-uniform influx of victims, crush injuries, broken legs, and trauma uh, will be the ones that are being brought to the hospital. Medical staff will experience role strain over their family, but they aren't going to abandon their medical role in favor of staying with their family. They'll make sure their family's okay, if they're a man, they'll actually go on believing that the woman they married is competent. <laughs> if you really peel back the onion on the fear that medical service people aren't going to come do their job, well, it's very sexist. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, and then they'll uh, go to work. Uh, there'll be a large non-uniform influx of patients to medical centers 
and victims will continue to give other victims first aid. 72 hours later, seriously damaged hospitals will be evacuated, outside trauma centers set up, non-quake victims med evacuated outside the area, uh, so on and so forth. A week later, more uniform distribution of patients will begin. Some hospitals will be evacuated due to non-structural damage. Uh, and uh, that were evacuated due to non-structural damage will be repopulated, and fewer trauma patients will be admitted. Victims will continue to give first aid in neighborhoods due to aftershock injuries. Continued attempts to transport injuries to hospitals will continue. What will we wish we had? Well, if you're thinking about the end result, which is medical problems that need medical attention, we'll wish we had done things to prevent those injuries. And that's why when you hear someone, for example, from the Red Cross say these kinds of things, that's what they're talking about. We'll wish we had heavy furniture straps, the kinds of straps that cost seven bucks that you screw into a stud and slap on the back in an appropriate way to your heavy amwas that are next to your bed. We'll wish we had strapped it so it didn't fall on our husband's legs. Our appliances. We'll wish we had strapped our heavy refrigerator to the back of the wall. We'll wish we had strapped our washer and dryer to the wall so it didn't bang into the wall across from it. Those beautiful, heavy, beveled edged mirrors in huge ornate frames you have hanging above your fireplace. We'll wish we had them hung with quake hooks so they stayed on the wall instead of whacked our grandkids in the head. And we'll wish we had put cabinet latches, dollar and 29 cents, or whatever they cost on all our cupboards so that the stuff in the cupboards would have stayed there instead of flown into the room. And we'll wish we had heavy duty first aid supplies. This is not expensive stuff to do. This is where the injuries come from. We'll wish we had learned first aid and CPR. And we'll wish we had learned not to run outside not to get in the triangle of life, and not to get in doorways. The thing to do when the ground sh shakes in California earthquakes is drop, cover, and hold on. You drop to the ground, get under a heavy table or desk, and hold the leg of the table so you're white knuckled because the forces of the earthquake will try to get that which is protecting your head and neck away from you and you want to keep it exactly where it is. And I don't care who tells you anything else. That's the official recommendation in the state of California by all the experts I know, including the ones in public health, including the epidemiologists who have gone and done research on how people in our earthquakes get injured. If you're in Guatemala in a mud hut, you might want to run outside. If you're in Haiti, if you're in a place where they haven't tried to design seismic sh shaking resistance into homes since the Long Beach earthquake in 1933, that's California, we've been doing that for a long time. Our houses fare fairly well. It doesn't mean they're gonna look pretty, but they tend not to collapse. Sheltering, that's the Northridge earthquake. That's a house. There's a woman holding her husband's head that's probably her kid in the tent. Where are they? Are they in the house? They're in a tent. Why are they in a tent? I keep telling people, you're not gonna wanna be in your house. You're gonna be afraid to be in your house. We're gonna have hundreds of aftershocks. One of the aftershocks we're going to have will be the size of the Northridge earthquake. Did you see the picture of what the Northridge earthquake did to freeways? 
That's our aftershock. You're not going to want to be in the house. Who are you afraid? So, sheltering, five minutes after the event. Organizations will provide nothing. People are going to examine their immediate setting and relocate if they perceive their immediate setting is unsafe. That's us. And uh, if you live in a large HOA with a beautiful golf course, you'll be on the golf course. 30 minutes later, organizations will provide nothing. People are gonna do more extensive damage assessment to the physical structure they're in when the earthquake happens, and they'll make a decision about staying or leaving. Two hours later, discussions between the Office of Emergency Services in Sacramento, Red Cross, and local governments with operable communication to Sacramento will determine the number, locations, and shelter logistics that are needed throughout Southern California. Aftershock damage assessment will occur and uh, people will consider utilities and perceived risk and decide whether they're gonna stay home or leave. Um, 24 hours later, a few Red Cross shelters will open, most likely on the west side, at schools and recreation areas. Regional Care Shelter Task Force uh, uh, will establish a, a, a plan and care and shaking and shelter locations will be identified. There'll be 120 shelters throughout Southern California up and running one day after the event. On the west side, uh, unplanned shelters will occur in parks, vacant lots, and streets. And many are gonna go to the homes of friends and relatives and hotels. On the east side, that's us. Most of us are gonna be camped outside our property and re-enter our home for supplies. Three days later, most Red Cross shelters set up throughout the area. Supplies will begin arriving at staging areas and being distributed to the shelters, and most shelters will be at capacity. The victims. The unmet needs of victims will be widespread. Unplanned shelters will need supplies and will be competing with organized shelters for them. And populated largely by poor and families with dependent children. A week later, the regional shelter network will be established. All shelters that will be established will be in place and will begin receiving a steady flow of supplies. 503 shelters will be established throughout Southern California. That's pretty precise a number. That's the kind of people that were working on these estimates. That's one week later. That's seven days later. Where are you gonna sleep before that? And unplanned shelters that are organized and will be organized and receiving supplies one way or another. What will we wish we had? We'll wish we had a comfortably sized tent. That's what they look like. You can stand up in them. We'll wish we had ways to light the nights. We'll wish we had a power source for our portable air conditioner located in our tent. We'll wish we had a portable ice maker in case it's 120 degrees in the desert when this earthquake happens and you're in a tent. And we'll wish we had a portable heater in case it's during the winter and it's 40 degrees at night. And we'll wish we learned how to keep cool and warm without electricity. And we wish, we'll wish we had learned we wouldn't want to stay in our houses. I have some friends that are heavy into emergency preparedness and I keep telling them you're not gonna wanna be in your house. And then they invite me over for dinner and they show me where they're gonna be in their house when the earthquake stops. How oh, come you don't get it? You're not gonna wanna be in here. And I can't press it too much, I'll never get invited back for dinner. <laughs> Food and water. There's a woman in San Francisco who somehow got some guys probably to carry a cast iron stove down to the street so she could cook after the 1906 earthquake. Isn't that something? Five minutes after this earthquake, there'll be no help regarding food and water from organized response. 
Victims are going to check water at their location. Half an hour later, no help from organized response. Victims will check their stored water supplies. If they have no water spot, uh, stored, they're going to consider what they might have to do. Two hours later, the Red Cross and NGOs are going to mobilize and begin to identify sources to provide shelters. Regional water needs will be assessed. That means a bunch of people sitting around a table talking and thinking about it. People, almost everyone who has some food and water at this point, we will, uh, victims will share our food and water with organized responders and with volunteer search and rescue groups. We'll be giving what we've got away. Trained Red Cross volunteers will begin to arrive at staging areas. 24 hours later, on the west side, organized shelters will be providing what victims need. On the east side, we'll be very slow to establish shelters, provide water, food, and assemble volunteers due to the extensive damage we'll have. On the east side, some are going to begin to need water and supplies, and they're going to look to government for it. Government doesn't have it. So they're going to go to stores to collect supplies. Some of them are going to be labeled looters by local media and authorities. In Haiti, there was a man who was an earthquake victim. His wife and daughters got crushed to death. His infant daughter survived. He had nothing to feed his child. She was being nursed, but the mother was dead. So he went into town, he saw their equivalent of a 7-Eleven, and he took a box of evaporated powdered milk. And somebody in law enforcement shot him to death for looting. That's where the myth of looting comes from. If the person who owned that store were there, they would have given him the box of evaporated powdered milk. So it wasn't somebody stealing diamonds. It was someone trying to save the life of his infant child. And if they come up to you in your tent and you have, like I do, 90 gallons of water, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to give them water. 72 hours or three days later, uh, governments are going to begin to coordinate to bring water and food to the region. Some water will be arriving, but most will still be en route. <clears throat> Victims are going to be running out of food and water. That's us. We're going to be making demands on local government. We're going to be camped on our front lawns and reliant on our own supplies, and they're going to begin to begin to run out. A week later, <clears throat> there'll be consistent free water and food coming through staging areas and distributed to organized shelters, spontaneous shelters, and people camped on lawns. Isolated rural residents will still be without food and water. On the east side, that's us, we're going to share our supplies with others. <clears throat> Some of us are going to be selling supplies and water at greatly inflated prices. Consequence reduction. Well, what do we wish we had? What we need to eat and drink outside for seven to 10 days. We'll wish we had extras for neighbors. We'll wish we had extras for stranded motorists and visitors. We'll wish we had learned that we needed to be self-reliant. That water is for more than drinking. excuse me, that we'd be overwhelmed by our generosity and that only cash would work for pur uh, purchases. <clears throat> and if the only cash you have is a $100 bill, anything you want to buy is going to cost $100. <clears throat> Fire suppression, the Northridge earthquake, mobile home park. Look at that man. What do you think he's thinking? Five minutes after the earthquake, there'll be no organized response to fires. People are going to try to escape fires. Half an hour later, there'll be attempts to locate fires begun and firefighting priorities 
are being considered by fire departments. Localized fires are going to be fought with any available resource by us, e.g. on-site fire extinguishers. So if you have one or two fire extinguishers about this big from Costco and you think you're safe, you may want to reconsider how many you have and their size. Two hours later on the west side, firefighters are going to be responding to ignitions in jurisdictional boundaries. On the east side, prioritized fire suppression will be going on. What does that mean? Well, basically what it means, if there's a high-rise building on fire with 14 stories and 2,000 people in it, that's a higher priority fire to fight than your vacation home. On the east side, prioritized fire suppression will be going on. Mutual aid is going to be requested, but it won't be able to get here. And many fires are going to become larger. People are going to put out small fires if they've had cert training and if they have operable fire extinguishers and if they've been detected early on. Uh, but most larger fires are not going to be fought and will burn out of control. Some victims will assist organized firefighters. Whether the organized firefighters whether the organized firefighters want assistance from the victims or not. Uh, the first wave of, a, of mutual aid will arrive at critical incidents, but only in accessible areas a day later. Highly damaged areas are going to be inaccessible, and evacuations initiated for large, uncontrolled fires. People are going to begin to form firefighting emergent groups and work as best they can. Three days later, most mutual aid will be in place. Most major fires are being fought. Some will be extinguished. Several very large fires will still be burning. We'll have at least one conflagration in Los Angeles. So how many of you know what a conflagration is? It's a firestorm that is so intense it has its own life and weather. It's what happened in San Francisco in 1906. Downtown LA won't burn, but all those acres of two bedroom, one bath houses built in 1940 to 1960 are gonna go up in flames. And fires are gonna account for 80% of all the evacuations that occur in this disaster. Uh, us, where three days later, we're going to monitor our surroundings for new fires and suppress small fires themselves and report larger fires because ignitions will be ongoing. Uh, it's not just when the initial shake happens, but it's also when the aftershocks occur. It's also if electricity comes back on and a, a fallen over lamp on some fabric in the living room and, and, and it's there for a day and it catches on fire. A week later, most major fires will be extinguished. Uh, firefighters will be available. Over 150,000 residential units will burn and 180,000 people will evacuate because of fires. And some victims will still continue to monitor the area for new fires. Consequence reduction. What will we wish we had as we're living through this? By the way, none of this means you need to leave the valley. <laughs> I should put that in about this point. It means you need to be prepared. What will we wish we had? We'll wish we had more fire extinguishers. We'll wish we had things to keep fires from starting. We'll wish we had learned how to keep fire extinguishers working. We'll wish we had learned how to prevent electrical and gas fires. We'll wish we had learned how to enhance mobile home safety. We'll wish we had learned how to quickly and safely extinguish fires. Any of you know how to do that? If you're cert trained, you probably do. We'll wish we had learned how to prevent fires in empty houses. And my city, Rancho Mirage, and I'm sure people here from other cities know a lot of the houses in our valley are infrequently inhabited. 
who's going to tend to the fires in the empty house next door? And we'll wish we had learned that we needed to get ready for fires as much as we did shaking. Root recovery. You got to love this picture. Again, the Northridge earthquake. There'll be no root recovery in the first five minutes. In 30 minutes, uh, organizations, major root obstacles will begin being reported and organizations will begin locating where their heavy equipment for root recovery is located. The victims will attempt to go home to reunite with family but encounter obstacles, keeping them from accomplishing that. And where there are no obstacles, there'll be traffic jams. Some are going to be stranded on roads due to obstacles. There'll be road damage and bridge damage. Two hours into uh, route recovery, most major route obstacles will be identified. I said California is really good at earthquake response, so they'll know where the bridges went down. And characterized and reported to emergency operations centers uh, and the California Highway Patrol and Caltrans will be working to develop to, together to develop strategies and priorities for closures and detours. Agencies will be aware of pockets of stranded motorists who need assistance. The victims. Compu commuters are going to encounter many road obstacles. Stranded motorists will phone for help where cell phones work. EOCs and route recovery agencies will be aware of stranded motorists. Some stranded motorists will remain in their vehicles. Many others are going to begin, abandon them and begin walking. Now, when I say many others, consider the people who are going to be caught on Interstate 10. And just to be clear, part of Interstate 10 is on top of the San Andreas and will be ripped in half and offset 20 to 40 feet. So the, the lanes aren't going to line up, which means you can't drive. That's going that way. Going that way, it'll be another problem. A bridge might come down. We have bridges come to, falling down on Interstate 10 when nothing bad's going on. Imagine in an earthquake. Um, We also have a lot of new bridges, and probably they'll do much better than if we didn't replace the old ones. Uh, but those people are going to begin walking. Where do you think they're going to walk to? You. 24 hours later, critical access routes will be identified. Priorities will be set for debris removal by a transportation task force in Sacramento. Uh, we'll have little root recovery here. There's good news. I have good news. The Palm Springs Airport, the runways will not have damage. There'll be a... <laughs> They'll be available to land transport planes. Now, I didn't say you're going to be able to get the supplies from the Palm Springs Airport to where we might want to have them, but I am saying they'll be there. Um, and uh, stranded motorists are going to be rescued, and some local streets will be cleared, yielding improved access. And root innovation will be occurring. What do I mean by root innovation? Bicycles and four-wheel drive vehicles. Three days later, on the west side, Access will be restored to major highways, and it'll be designated a high priority. All major airports in Southern California will be functioning, and the LA Metro, in case you're interested, is, will be back in full operation. Stuff that's buried underground does a whole lot better in earthquakes than stuff above ground. One week later, greater recovery of secondary streets will occur through the use of detours and some repairs. Some bridges will be inspected and opened on the east side, that's us. I-10 will remain impassable and still cannot be crossed. Consequence reduction. What will we have wish we had? Bicycles with old fashioned grocery baskets on the handlebars and pumps to put air in the tire. 
rough terrain vehicles and we'll wish we had kept them parked outside in our driveways, despite what our HOA presidents say. <laughs> and we'll wish we had X bracing for our carports. Did you see the picture of the carport roof in the San Fernando earthquake at all of you hospital crushing the ambulance under it? That's what, hap that's what carports can do to vehicles that are in carports that aren't X-braced. What's X-braced? You know the things that go up and down that hold up carports? If it looks like an X, it's got X-bracing. And that turns a great big open space into what in physics feels like a solid wall. And if it doesn't have an X, it does it, and they tend to fall down in earthquakes. We'll wish we had learned no one is going to be leaving the Coachella Valley, and no one is going to be arriving in the Coachella Valley any time soon. We really are going to be on our own. The people you are going to rely on to help you are the people you were looking at when I asked you to look at the person on your left and right. Which is why we in Rancho Mirage are so excited about Map Your Neighborhood, which is a way of getting people who live next to each other to come together and take notes, uh, telling each other things that most people don't know about their neighbors, where the gas shutoff valve is on all the houses on that street. Where's the switch to turn off the electricity in case you're still in Canada and haven't come, and come down for the season? <coughs> Stuff like that. Um, we we'll wish we had learned that no first responders will be available anytime soon. 911 will not answer your call. And we'll wish we had learned that garage doors may not open. Did you see the picture of the house in the San Simeon earthquake that had a garage door that was twisted? I picked that picture just for this moment. Garage door is a great big open space. There's nothing holding that space together. It's easy to twist it. Garage doors aren't going to go up and down after this earthquake. That house did really well. It didn't collapse and squash the people in it. It doesn't look pretty. It needs a little repair. But we'll wish we learned that our garage doors may not open. Conclusions. There's the state we live in. The pink and the red are our faults. <laughs> Nature is going to cause the quake. But what we don't do to prepare is going to cause the consequences. So if you want to know what's going to happen to you in this earthquake, even though it's going to be a big earthquake, what's going to happen to you in this earthquake is totally and completely determined not by nature. It's not bad luck. It's about what you've done and haven't done to get ready for it. I've gone overboard in getting ready for this earthquake. I have five plans. I have three tents. I have a portable, big solar electric generator with solar panels. I have a portable air conditioning unit. I'm not kidding. Marsha's seen it all. I have a portable ice cube maker. And I enjoy telling people, among other things, I have my favorite gin wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> Everything you need to know to get ready for this earthquake, regardless of where you live, can be found in one place, RanchoMiragePreparedness.org.